Okay, I am ready when you are. And we are recording. Hmm? Hello. This is a, um, I would say, follow up recording or take two or whatever recording of our processing chapter eight. And we have actually done one discussion in chapter eight, but the footage didn't have any audio, so. <laughs> It was missing the key element, but now we are here to redo it. Mm -hmm. So, chapter eight, Seeker. Hello? A timid voice called through the shuffle door. Jewel turned and saw a feeble, flaxy-skinned guy, scarred streaks all over his wispy arms. You wanted to see me? This must have been that Lennis character. I did. Tell me about Fortune Harper. You're not going to arrest me? Jewel almost laughed. What for? You're already in here. Lennis, visi Lennis relaxed visibly. They told me an agent was looking for me. He took a deep breath. Fortune? Besides myself, Fort is the only one who could keep the aquaponics working. He frowned. More like hydroponics now. The fish died. We need to process the dead to keep the cycle running. May not be so pretty, but you know, circle of life and all that. He shrugged. Jewel examined his glazed, wide eyes. How did you even end up here? Uh, I I'm not sure. The record says, burnt down a residential unit. But I don't remember, right? And I'm afraid of fire. Must have done something, I guess. Wouldn't be here otherwise, right? There are others like this too. Don't remember what got them here. Jewel cut in. What about Fortune? How did he get here? Thought he always said they plucked him straight from his business aid celebration. Others made fun of that, said it must have been one wild party. What was he like? Forty? Jewel nodded, trying to main her, maintain her calm. Quiet, kept mostly to himself in the Aqualab. Followed orders, stayed out of trouble, never made a fuss. He smiled. Sure caught all, us all by surprise when he took off. We only found out after things calmed down too. Not what you'd expect. We didn't anyway. <laughs> okay. So this is where I should take a little pause. Oh, so I will add a note here. Uh, I didn't notice it yesterday, but during this reading I would say that somewhere early in the dialogue we need to add the point where Joel brings him into the shuttle or, or invites him in so that they would be like more contained. Yeah. Like uh, maybe he uh, he sits uh, in the doorway or something, but basically, the I uh, I I see this uh, dialogue taking place inside solitaire, or at least mostly mm -hmm. inside. And from this point on comes the comes the stuff where I started moving the dialogue a lot uh, around, because the way it was was that uh, Jewel asked about Fortune, what was it like then she jumped on to so tell me about the escape pods and then she asked about Fortune again like what, how he would react and all that and I'm guessing that in the old days and compared to the previous version it made sense but now it stood out to me uh, so I have I have messed things up a little bit here, or, or f fluffed, fluffed them up, and I've moved some of the dialogue around so that uh, so that the questions about fortune would follow the other questions about fortune. But th this means that I have to tweak some of uh, Jewel's lines or or some of. Uh, some of Jewel's uh, stuff because uh, there has to be a uh, occasionally it seemed to me that, that, that there isn't strong enough motivation to ask the things uh, she did ask it's okay. like, it's like uh, the dialogue was following the things that we need to uh, show in the plot 
but they didn't uh, quite mix with the what Jewel wants to know or what she mm. needs to know. Uh, so let's see. So from this point on, uh, her segue should be about. So what else can you tell me, or 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 uh, what else did you notice, or sort of like segue questions. Uh, then comes this part. You can read it. I don't. I don't. I mean, thought he kept to himself. Never talked any plans or the like. If you do the lab, each day is a little different. You check the plants, you tend the fish. Next day, some little change happens. You got to keep up, keep the balance. It takes attention, man. Lennis winced. Why the fish didn't make it? You see, I couldn't take care of them like he could. Couldn't keep up. He gripped his shoulders and started rocking back and forth. Okay. And uh, as as we as we are picking up uh, from this, also is that he's he's like his main concern is uh, is the is the lab. Like he mm. keeps prattling on about that, and he also <laughs> always returns to the uh, the fish died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and right now I'm working on the point about uh, how Jewel will uh, uh, will get to the idea about the skateboards because I realized we we have a mini plot hole in our hands here. Uh, why would she expect him to know anything about those? So it's it's more like she will ask she will ask because he's there. And I also figured that the skate ports, or at least the housings, or the the ch shoots for the skate ports, should be right there in the in the bay, so they might be even visible from from uh, nearby. So basically, she can indicate like so what's what's here. Mm. And what I have put together right now, or I'm in the process of putting together, is that. Uh. Okay, she she will ask him about the ports, or like, uh, what what can you tell me about those, or 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 have you have you ever dealt with these up close, and and he gives his usual uh, cockadoodle, <laughs> but uh, but she might one point that I'm thinking of including that she she says something like. Uh, well, you are a technician, so you must have heard something. Mm. Because as a, as a as a food lab technician, they would have to be somewhat closer working with the guards. Even even if we don't know what the uh, guard prisoner dynamic and structure there was exactly, but if you're if you're involved in food supply, then uh, then you would have to be a chummier with the administration whatever that the administration is mm. so it's it's like even even if things don't work the way she would think they do she would still have reason to uh, to suspect that uh, that maybe he does know something or like she can grasp for that straw mm. and And uh, and uh, he might know uh, that uh, there is some special access uh, required, and th this is this is where our invisible subplot comes in. So the 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 <laughs> we shall call it the prisoner dilemma, <laughs> the the hidden hidden story. That's that's happening with the uh, Trelasi Two Prison Station and Heron Patrol uh, guards. Uh, the story that doesn't explicitly show in Seeker, but has been happening in the background. Uh, thing is that, uh, according to the uh, pr uh, prison riot reports and according to what Jewel has learned about this place. It is. It is. It is not a nice place. So we're dealing with a uh, private prison station. 
there are guards on board, but according to what we knew by now, according to the reports, there is no real need for guards because the place has automated, uh, like there are so many automated systems outside guarding it that nobody's getting out anyway. If they get out, they will be easily apprehended, and uh, and inside, uh, the uh, the environment can be uh, can be used against uh, the population. Now, I planted this uh, semi-plausible idea in Jules' mind that uh, uh, if something went down. With the uh, with the situation, like when when things get bad, they uh, they trigger the riot protocol, and riot protocol basically means that guards escape, or like abandon ship basically, but also abandon ship and cut uh, cut life support. And as we have learned, life supports back on, like all 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 systems are working, and we are also missing a prisoner, so. There, there is this hidden story of a prison guard who helped to uh, get the get the mess started, and in all the chaos, we have a prisoner who went away and the guard who maybe stayed behind, because somebody had to somebody had to unlock the the chute or the container or wh whatever thingy. Uh, that you need to access and activate the escape port. Somebody had to open it for fortune, unless he he hacked it himself. And somebody had to help the prisoners to uh, to cancel the uh, the riot protocol or the doomsday switch. Unless somebody was uh, uh, was smart enough to to hack into it and do it themselves. So so basically, it is it is plausible that. Uh, uh, that the prison population was able to overcome this this thing, but on the other hand, uh, the uh, the riot protocol triggering the guards getting out, especially if the guard duty itself was some sort of penalty. It 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 all it all sorts of uh, it all sort of uh, adds into its own little uh, little dark story about the guard who wanted to leave and the guard who didn't want to leave. <laughs> mm. So yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Conspiracy. Yeah, and uh, and uh, if there was a guard who wanted, to, who was well, basically the assumption here is that the uh, that the uh, harem patrol guards were just uh, well they they too were being contained they too were being uh, put into this place uh, not by their own choice mm. and uh, and if anybody asks then uh, think Voltec so like one one major assumption here is that this place did not operate on best of intentions towards <laughs> anybody. Like if it's if it's a place where you stow away uh, kidnapped people uh, on on bogus charges, then uh, then you, you you must have some sort of bigger conspiracy running in the background and different organizations having pacts with each other and experiments and whatever. So so basically, think of this station. In the same terms as you would think of a Voltec uh, vault <laughs> doing uh, running running their nefarious things, mm -hmm. and and in all this, some shit went down. Some guards got out. One guard uh, chose to stay be stay in there. Maybe uh, this might be his way of faking his death. Maybe or sort of getting 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 lost in there. And and in all this confusion, uh, Fortune somehow got out. Mm. Uh, whether whether he was in on the uh, on the conspiracy or not, we do not know. So yes, 
all <laughs> all all this all this story is sort of in there hidden mm. but now uh, when it comes to the dialogue that Jewel has with Lenis so uh, she will ask him about the uh, escape pods or evacue pods and and he would be able to tell her something but not too much and and right now the best i could come up with was this so if you re if you would read from here <coughs> Think, you're a tech. You must have seen some info somewhere. Oh, I know they have heat shields for, for atmospheric entry. Lenis beamed in pride for having an answer. And Fortune never told you of the escape or where he might be heading. Not even a hint. Lenis shook his head. He, well, he seemed bitter that his family never tried to bail him out. Sounded like he had nowhere to go. He sighed. <laughs> Wish I'd got out with him. Now I can't go. They would starve without me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Yeah, so uh, I I do have some of his dialogue down, uh, but I but I don't know yet uh, the full extent of it. So I might omit some details. So basically, he he does know something about the skateboards, but not too much. But still, just enough to be useful a little bit. Mm -hmm. So basically, he he knows how fortune got out. Maybe maybe he knows the guard who stayed behind. Maybe he is the guard. No, no. Too far. We're going yeah, too far. Too far. Too up. far. <laughs> Keep it simple. He was he was the lab partner. Mm -hmm. He let the fish die. <laughs> he can't leave because everybody else would starve and he this is this is his thing. Oh, Lenius. <laughs> and uh, if you if you look up I, I also remove the um uh indi uh moved reference to to Yorf. I just gave him the idea that he burned something down without any any location because again in the context of this story it 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 tells exactly nothing because yeah. there is there is no no background to it no uh no added value here mm. of course here thing about him knowing uh, how Fortune got out would imply that he might have witnessed it. So I might might add a note about this in So let's see backstory wise uh, I wouldn't want uh, fortune to be involved in the uh in the quote unquote uh, riot uh, because that would be too active like mm -hmm. he just he sees the moment but he didn't set the situation up yeah uh, but I I would I would be willing to believe that uh, that he either got the codes somehow, stole them, smuggled them, traded them, or or he outright uh, hacked the pod or or hacked the hacked the thingy. And if he hacked it, or or so, sort of bypassed some systems, 
uh, that would uh, solve another issue later on, uh, namely how Jewel knows which uh, which port signature to follow. But on Cause more more on that later. <laughs> okay. Because I, I have I have a I have a note about it later on. So let's let's remember this point right now and carry on. Jewel sighed. Thank you, Lennis. You did good. She reached into her bag for a pack of Bora jerky and split its contents with him. Best you eat here. Wouldn't want the others catch you waving this around. She watched him tearing tearing into the delicious Jewel sighed. Thank you, Lennis. You did good. She reached into her bag for a pack of Bora jerky and split its contents with him. Best you eat here. Wouldn't want the others catch you waving this around. She watched him tearing into the precious meat like a starved rodent. Speaking of the others, I need my shuttle unlocked. Any ideas? Ennis kept chewing and shook his head. Mmm. He gulped. You need to sp Sorry. You need to speak to the boss. Jewel frowned. The guy on the comms? Mmm. He swallowed again. He was one of those leading the takeover, and with the others gone, he's in charge now. It's not that bad. They leave, they leave me be in the lab, mostly. Only visit when I'm having trouble keeping them fed. He cowered slightly. <laughs> She'd heard enough. Jewel went and stood in the middle of the walkway. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, actually, I think I would go with the other version. Jewel gave him a pat on the back, stepped out of the shuttle and stood in the middle of the walkway. We need to talk. Okay, right. <coughs> Excuse me. Jewel gave him a pat on the back, stepped out of the shuttle and stood in the middle of the walkway. We need to talk! Her shout had echoed away when the speakers crackled. What is it, Seeker? She weighed her every word. I have a business proposal for you. I understand that this, this station has some difficulties procuring a stable food supply. She stood back, allowing them time to think. Your point? Seekers have lots of merchant contract contacts, many unofficial. I know some who would gladly bring in food and supplies, make an exchange for station scrap. I could inform them you're willing to do business if you unlock my shuttle, that is. Okay. I will take it from here because I have some messy inserts here, but I know what I want him to say actually. Okay. So, uh, his next dialogue line is Your offer sounds tempting, Seeker, but what assurance do I have that you won't? And, and the idea here is that he, uh, what he should be asking is how, do, how, do the, how will they know that she won't? Uh, set them up to open their defenses, or or to leave uh, to lead the uh, harem patrol right back in. Mm. And uh, her rep her reply is uh, basically reciting the facts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh, it's it's less less speculation, but more. More about what she what she learned from uh, from the situation report. So the uh, the text here is incomplete, but it's something like consider the facts. They know all about what's happening. They just can't be arsed. Ah, oh, they they have full knowledge of the situation and control everything that's outside the hatch. They could have established control inside any time if they chose so. So she's extrapolating that they probably just can't be arsed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and honestly, it looks like at the moment you're not the priority. And uh, and then add the smart ass note that uh, they are contained as is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the point about uh, I will take out her op opinions about their little scheme. This is unnecessary in my opinion. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my opinion against hers. <laughs> and, and I have the keyboard. And uh, I think I will 
work in uh, the point that she has left two bodies behind, so she won't want to deal with uh, with the Heron Patrol too much because <laughs> that might uh, might might mean that Seekers lose some brownie points with uh, with Heron or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I, I will I will make it much shorter than this point is, so it's it's more like a passing mention than uh, than main argument. Her main argument is that they they know everything that's happening and they can't mm -hmm. be arsed. <laughs> so like basically they she she uh, she's just showing that she has no leverage because anything that she could hold against them is already out in the open. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is where they reach agreement. And from here comes the point. Last page is where I don't have too many notes yet, but I, I know some things that need changing. So, resume reading from here. Jewel hurried back to the shuttle, finding Lennis wandering about the bay. You might want to head back in now. Thank you. She paused. Uh, look, I won't promise anything, but I'll look into your file. That was Lennis Simmel, right? She captured, it, she captured his image and scribbled some quick notes to it. He nodded with hope in his smile. I'd like that. Maybe they mixed things up and I didn't really burn anything at all. Jewel half smiled back. I'll look into it. She sealed the hatch behind her. The shudder of Solitaire's thrusters coming back to life felt truly reassuring. As they hovered towards the exit, Jewel added the coordinates of Trelasi 2 into the navigation plan. This planet and the escape pods had become her only solid lead. The way the boss spoke of fortune, possibly begrudged over the food chain downgrade, and the fact that Lennis couldn't lie to a carp to save his life, gave her hope that the intel was good. She would find out for sure in just over eight kiloseconds. Okay, pause here. So, uh, yeah, when she says that she will look stuff up about Lennis, uh, I figured that she should be taking notes. And uh, and what a better what better way to do it than capture a picture and and add some notes to it. So I, w mm -hmm. I will have to work out a very sort of passing, glancing way of expressing it so that it, it doesn't it won't become a snag. And also. Shudder of thrusters is not the right thing here because uh, the mm, the way in and out of the docks uh, is where they do the magnetic glide mm -hmm. or, or whatever hand wave thingy we have we have said, but basically not propulsion. Mm. Just doing the aerodynamic thingy here. And now comes uh, now comes another minor plot point uh, or, or plot hole. So basically, uh, what gives her the data, or what gives her the the shit that she needs to track the pods in the first place? So I hear you've written request that data. Uh, uh, yeah, my initial thought was that she should be uh, requesting that data from uh, uh, from uh, Heron Patrol HQ or, or well, the, from their representative. But I'm thinking, since the pods are uh, are basically part of the station, she could just uh, communicate with the with the station systems, mm. and uh, and uh, and get the get the codes. And this way, now now comes the part where uh, where the how how did Fortune gain access to John? 
to an evacuate port uh, comes relevant because if he didn't have the proper code or if he if he somehow bypassed the systems and uh, hacked it <laughs> mm. then this means she would be able <coughs> to uh, track his port easily like she she would be able to tell that oh okay this is uh, this is authorization authorization this authorization that authorized launch authorized launch unauthorized launch oh bingo mm -hmm. and uh, and I was thinking if if he managed to do a, an unauthorized launched launch or or bypass or whatever system bypass blah 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 I can I can make up techno bubble uh, <laughs> if he did that this would also mean that the uh, sentry drones would have taken some shots on him which would uh, show some scorch marks uh, show up as scorch marks in chapter 9 so I think there there was some uh, some initial uh, some uh, uh, some uh, unrelated point about damage to the port mm. but we can amp it up a little bit and say that uh, the port has external damage because uh, uh, he actually got shot by the perimeter uh, drones it just they, they just didn't take him out <coughs> there's an element here that they might have just um, they might have taken snapshots of it of him and when he lands, he's immediately he's he's immediately picked up by people from the Trelasi Two station. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're just letting him escape. Like the, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the idea. So yeah. basically, uh, the uh, there's like multi-layered controls. Mm -hmm. Point one: uh, the uh, the station, the prison station, only has the one port or one exit. Uh, the uh, escape ports or evacuate ports are a bit of a bypass to that, but you need you need authorization to get into those. Even if you get out without an authorization, the uh, sentry drones will will shoot at you. And even if you get through there, you will be picked up uh, as soon as you make it on the planet. So mm -hmm. so the the ports will be tracked. That's uh, that's a given. It's just yeah. that. Uh, uh, whether whether you will be tracked as a, for rescue or for capture <laughs> uh, <laughs> <it> depends. <laughs> mm. But yeah, basically, this uh, this was my tangent or this was my thinking process behind the idea of why why it's uh, why it's practical. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this this ties up a lot of things. Yeah, yeah really yeah. nicely. And and this this is also uh, when it comes to fortune, this is also characteristic because he he is the brainy guy, so uh, he should be able to tinker with with certain things. So even even if he has, I don't know, acquired some guard do that that will help him hack the shit better, he would still have to figure a way to bypass it better or, or some something of that of that sort. Pardon me. Yeah, nice. Mm hmm And do, 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 so where were we? I okay. think here. They are, yeah, they are flying. Let me let me add one note here. Continue? Yeah. Jewel rigor. Eh. 
<laughs> Good start. Excellent work. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Jewel wriggled her aching body out of all garments and made her way up. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Give me a minute here. I've suddenly just started stumbling. What's going on? Jewel wriggled her aching body out of all garments and made her way to the water tap. She drew enough to soak the almost clean towel and after relieving herself in the guest pod, gave herself a good rub all over. After a moment's hesitation, she closed the towel into the pod along with her waist and started up its cleaning cycle. Watching the dematter glow moving up and down the pod's height, she made a mental note to grab some fresh fabrics with her next time she hit a bunkhouse. She sprayed some insta skin on her knuckles, pushed back the thought of how good a bunk would feel and busied herself with getting dressed. Socks, underlayers, stasis garb, spare shirt, holsters. Finally, she pulled her jacket on and, buck and buckled into the seat. Mm -hmm. There's, I, I noticed some... So basically, I need to work on this text some more because... Even even if you force yourself to to read it smoothly, I I know that it can be it can flow better, and I already saw some sentences that I want to switch around and mm -hmm. or, or more like sentence halves to switch around. Watching the dematter glow moving up and down the pod's height, she made a mental note to grab some fe fresh fabrics next time she hit a bunkhouse. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to delete this. Yeah. And uh, with the next one, I'm going to turn it around so that uh, at first uh, she pushes back the thought of a warm bunk and then uh, then patches herself up and all that. Carry on. The screen's filled up with data of the approaching planet. Jewel tapped away the bio and eco bubbles, poked a fat no on the whole camera prompt, confirmed entry trajectory, and buckled up for the descent. She could already feel the shakes building up beyond Solitaire's G-fix, punctuated by cushion bursts from its rear thrusters. Aerodynamic mode engaged, reorienting, resuming course. Jewel unlocked the manual controls and allowed the planet's datascape to take over the main screen. Two signatures clearly belong to card carriers. She rejected those, ordering the third trial to overlay with topographic view. She steered solitaire towards its landing site. Yeah, so the final paragraph I will have to rework some because uh, this this is where all the how and why she she tracks them becomes relevant. And also I'm going to guess that there will be more of the guard pods than just two. <laughs> yeah. So, so I will uh I will make it uh I will make it vaguer. Also she's not resuming course or I mean solitaire is not resuming course, solitaire is setting course. And and the idea about uh, yeah, I, I will. The, the end bit uh, needs a little bit more work than the previous bit. But when I was reading it, uh, there's I know this is way beyond the point right now, but mm -hmm. there's not enough beats in that last mm -hmm. sentence to justify a chapter end. Or no, wait, what am I trying to say here? It's not enough as as a chapter end. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So work out a proper ending. And yeah, basically this, uh, from the point on where she takes off, uh, we need a sort of nicely paced glimpse into all the routines and, you know, mm -hmm. usual, usual seeker shit. Yep. Flying around, taking care of your uh, broken body, uh, taking, uh, studying shit, uh, taking notes, etc, etc, etc. So it's, uh, rhythm-wise, it should be somewhat similar to, let's say, beginning of chapter 5 and 
and, and all those. But yeah, this is this is as far as we are right now. Mm-hmm. Anything to add? I got nothing. I'm pretty satisfied. Yeah. And with chapter eight, uh, I have pretty clear idea what to do and where and even how. Frankly, I was hoping to finish it yesterday. Like I, I picked it, I picked it uh, up yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, this is not much. I can finish it today." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and as per usual, things take a little bit more time. That thinking is such a <laughs> trap. It's yeah. such a trap. But uh, but some sometimes that's that's the thing. Sometimes it turns out to be true. Yeah. And uh, and you think back to those times when uh, when you thought, "Ooh, I could finish this in one day," or "I could finish this by sundown," and it and it worked. And like, uh, "Ooh, yes, this is how <laughs> everything works all the time." <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, <yes. laughs> right. I think I will. I'll wrap it up. Wrap the recording up. This has been chapter 8. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Bye.